ball. I know you do. Go. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone. I hope that you are doing fantastically well. Today, I'm going to be talking about memorization. So I was surprised that you asked me about memorization considering how often I play from my iPad on Instagram and also on my other YouTube videos. But, well, I have played without score on many occasions, I assure you, in solo recitals and also at international competitions. since I have found myself in either of those situations due to the pandemic, but I'm more than happy to give you advice. Here with me today, I have Rachmaninoff, so you might hear his little feet, his paws running around. So I wrote down a couple of things that came to mind, not in any particular order. I figured that we would just dive in and see where the video goes. The first thing that I will mention is something I got from one of my first piano teachers, Yura Margulis. I was getting my bachelor's studying under him at the University of Arkansas, although he now teaches in Vienna. And on the door to his studio, he had two pieces of paper, one of them with a fantastic meme about practicing technique, which I will try to find, and another one with a time frame of how long before a situation you should have a piece memorized. Unfortunately, I never took a photo of this piece of paper, but I still have a rough idea of what it said. The first on the list was have your program memorized one month ahead of performing a recital. Next, three months before going into a competition. After that, have the concerto memorized one year before playing with orchestra and have a concerto memorized two years before recording with an orchestra. So this is the first thing that I'm going to mention and you guys aren't going to like it. Okay, yes, there are techniques, there are tips and advice I can give you to make memorization a little bit easier, but the truth of the matter is you have to work for it and it's going to take time. I believe that when people see a classical pianist on stage playing effortlessly, they don't realize the amount of time that took. When you see somebody like Roy Pariah playing Beethoven beautifully, please keep in mind he's been performing that concerto for, what, 40 years, okay? The first time he performed that concerto, it was really good, I'm sure, but it was not at that level. Give yourself plenty of time to memorize a program. Now, depending on the length of the piece, the difficulty of the piece, that could take you anywhere from three months to six months, even longer, nine months. And the best way to learn pieces and to memorize them is to do so without pressure. A pianist who I admire greatly, Jorge Boulay, would learn and we learn a piece three times before ever bringing it onto the concert stage. Now, I know that many of you watching this are probably preparing a program for a music exam and you do not have that luxury, but once you graduate, I would try to live with this in mind. And that's what I do right now. So for example, I'm recording the Chopin Nocturnes, but on the side, I'm pursuing many other solo pieces because although I'm not planning on performing these pieces right away, perhaps I'll be playing them in six months, a year, two years, it doesn't matter. The sooner you start to get these pieces under your fingers, the better. Have a knowledge of music theory, even the most rudimentary, even the most basic. Trust me, it's going to help you. Let's say you're trying to memorize a sonata. The first thing you should know, if you don't already, is what sonata form is. And then I want you to look at each individual section. I want you to cut each movement into sections. And you can say, okay, this is the exposition, the development, the recapitulation, the recapitulation, there we go. And I want you to take notice of certain elements throughout. So you could say, okay, so this is the key here. And there's this lovely passage with six, which Beethoven takes in the, 
um, in the development, right? And he does this thing with the six and he adds an arpeggiated section, a few octaves. And then finally, in the recapitulation, he modulates to this key. So that sounded more complicated than it actually is. If you are able to create a map in your mind of exactly where the piece goes, you are more likely to memorize it. For example, you're in a performance situation, you're trying to think, oh my gosh, I don't know what comes next. Maybe you think to yourself, E major. You think of an E major chord and there you go. Even having this one chord in a section is enough to keep you going sometimes, which Leads me, I suppose, to my second point. Mark different starting and stopping places in each score. This is particularly useful in fugues. I remember I was studying with a Russian teacher back in Kansas City, and she advised me every two lines just to put a random stopping point in a fugue, and that I should be able to start from any point at any time. Why? Let's say I have a memory slip and a performance. What's the worst thing that you can do in a memory slip? To freeze and to not be able to continue. By practicing these little points, let's say you have a memory slip and you have to skip two measures, so be it. It's much better than being frozen on stage and having to walk off of the stage. Another good method is to give yourself short and manageable goals. For example, one day you might tell yourself, I will memorize this line. The next day, you'll say you'll memorize the second line. And the third day, you'll play the first and second lines together by memory. And yes, I know that it sounds small, but over time, if you are dedicated and diligent, it'll add up. Another tip, which is related to fugues, but not entirely, is of course working hands separately and memorizing hands separately. And of course, you're very welcome to take this a step further by working individual voices separately and even memorizing them separately in the case of a fugue. Now, I never went this far, but I know people who did, and I have heard of people who were able to play one voice of a fugue and to hum another, which I know, staggers the imagination. And I'm not suggesting that you do this, but perhaps it's a nice goal to have, or if you're struggling, you can remind yourself that yes, somebody somewhere, more than one person did that. So yes, of course, the least you can do is memorize a few voices in a Bach fugue, right? <laughs> this may not sound like a memorization tip, but it actually is. Muscle memory, you guys, is a very, very real thing. So make sure that when you're practicing a piece at home, you decide on a fingering and you stick to it because there's a chance when you get in a performance setting with all of that adrenaline, with nerves, well, your mind might go somewhere else, but your fingers are going to know what to do. Another excellent technique for memorization is looking at the score away from the piano. I have heard stories of pianists from the 20th century who would be traveling to their next venue by train and they would look at the score and they would memorize the piece without ever having played it. Look, I think that some people have a facility for memorization more than other people. I do not think I could ever be capable of that. Um, but there is something to be said about taking a moment outside of the practice room to look at the score. Don't eat that. Come here, baby shoe. Come here. Get down. Oh. <laughs> Where was I? When you take the physical side, all of the technical tricky bits, and you throw them away, you might be able to notice different aspects of the score which you otherwise would not have been aware of. And noticing these different sections will help you in memorization. This next tip is probably only useful if you have been working on the piece for some time. It is slow practice. 
If you can play a movement of a Beethoven sonata at half speed, you are good to go. Do you know why? It means you're not relying pretty much at all on muscle memory. When you're forced to slow down, you need to use all of your mental facilities, mental faculties to keep going. And another similar trick, and I advise this a couple of weeks before a performance or before a competition, is to lay down or sit down if you prefer, close your eyes and play through the piece mentally visualizing your hands on the keyboard. This is very difficult to do and you will probably have to slow down the tempo quite a lot. And if you can make it through the piece mentally, you will do just fine on stage. I know that this is tricky. It takes a lot of determination and focus. It isn't fun to do, but it is incredibly efficient and has worked for me. Finally, my last piece of advice is simply to perform as much as you can. And you might be saying to yourself, Haley, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Where am I supposed to go? And you are absolutely right. But there is something to be said about setting up your ring light, setting up your tripod and pressing the red button. I know that I still feel pressure when I press the red button less than I did a couple years ago, but yes, I still feel that twinge of nerves 